Hello and welcome to lesson number 16 in the Python tutorial series. My name is Steve and today we're going to do a quick review of modular arithmetic. Now I know modular arithmetic is something that we handled very early on in this tutor tutorial series. I think it was even lesson one or two that we did it in. Uh, modular arithmetic is going to play a role in the next project we have coming up and I'll tell you more about that in uh, future lessons. But we're going to uh, just do some quick review on modular arithmetic and then use it to write a program more up to the speed of what we've been doing this far just to make sure that you've got a good grasp of what's going on. Now there's two commands in particular that we're going to be doing or two operations uh, and that is the modulo command which is noted by a percent sign and integer division. And just uh, I'm going to go over here to my shell as part of the introduction and just give you a uh, problem. Normally we could do 74 divided by 10 and that's going to return 7.4. If I did 74 mod 10, I'm going to get a 4 because 74 divided by 10 gives returns a remainder of 4. It goes in 7 times with a remainder of 4, so I get the 4. And 74 integer division 10 will give me a 7 because that's the maximum number time. 10 will fully go into 74. So that should be just simple, simple review. And, you know, some of you are probably yelling at your screen that you're not an idiot and you know that stuff. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And in the lesson today, we're going to be pulling number, like uh, we're going to be pulling large numbers apart and breaking them down into the tens place, the ones place, the hundreds place. And then we're going to in our challenge program, design a little program around that concept. So let's go get, go ahead and get started with uh, modular arithmetic. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to clear my screen here. And the lesson portion of this video should be pretty straightforward, pretty easy to follow for anyone who's kept up with this, uh, because it's just real basic math. So to provide an example, let's go over to our programming window and let's set a variable num. And we're going to set it equal to 49. Our goal is to extract the tens place and the ones place from that number separately. In order to do that, I'm going to set a variable tens to represent just the tens place. And the way I'm going to get that is just take the number and do integer division by 10. 10 will go into 49 four times with a remainder of 9 and integer division will drop that remainder, leaving me a 4 for the tens place, which is exactly what I want. If I want to get the ones place, I can take num mod 10. I can use this, uh, the modulo command, and 49 mod 10, well 10 goes into 49, four full times with a remainder of 9, and the mod command will return the number 9. So I've successfully taken just the number 49 and broken it down into two separate variables, a tens place and a ones place. I know that's very simple, and of course it is. It's a concept that we're going to be using in an upcoming program, and we can provide an example of how this works by just printing num. Let's go ahead and save this as test.py so we can make sure everything is working correctly. And see, so when I print num, I'm getting 4 and 9. If I print the tens place and then the ones place, I'm getting a 4 and a 9, so I've successfully pulled the tens and ones out of the number 49. And I can change this around. Let's maybe change this number to 76 and see if our program still works. And of course it does. So we've got just using simple integer division and simple module, the modulo command, we can pull different places out of these numbers. Now, one thing that this allows us to do is if I wanted to take a number and then I wanted to print it out in reverse, if I wanted to take the number 76 and print it out as 67, that'd be really difficult to do working with the number 76. But if I break the number down, I can now print the ones place and the tens place and print the number in reverse very, very easily. But you might note that while it's printing here, we're getting those weird spaces, and that's because I'm printing the numbers with the comma, though. The comma in my print function instructs Python to put a carriage return into 
what it's displaying on the screen. Now, what I might be able to do, or like one solution to this, would be to change the comma to a plus symbol. But remember, we're dealing with numbers here, so that plus operator is going to add the two numbers together, so 7 plus 6 is 13. If I want to print a true reversal of the number, I'm going to use that plus, but I'm going to convert each of these to a string before I print. When I do that, I'm getting the number 76 in reverse, which is 67, and I can do that with any number I want. I can take the number 28, run this, and I'm getting the number 82. So I'm reversing the numbers. That's really all modular arith arithmetic is. Now it gets a little bit more complicated if you're going to use longer numbers. Let's say we're going to use a four-digit number. That can get to be a little bit more complicated, but the process is still the exact same. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen here, and let's do the exact same process, but let's see the slight change that occurs when we work with a longer number. So I'm going to take a new variable, and this time instead of a two-digit number, I'm going to make it a four-digit number. So let's do 8642. So 8,642. And I'm going to go ahead and print that number at the bottom and run this program just to make sure that it's running correctly. Of course, I'm printing 8,642. Perfect. Now, if I want to pull the ones place out of this number, I'm going to do it the exact same way I did it for a, a two-digit number, a three-digit number. I'm just going to take the number and use modular division. I'm going to take num mod 10. And if you think about how this works in your head, 8,642 divided by 10 is 864 with a remainder of 2. So the remainder is the same as the ones place, and I can even test this out by printing the ones place. And when I do that, I'm getting only the number 2. So my formula to pull the ones place out is working correctly. Now here's where it gets a little bit trickier. My tens place is a 4. And last time, I just took the num and did integer division by 10. That's how I got the 4 in a two-digit number. The trouble is, on a larger number, oops, uh, let me go ahead and add that to my print statement down here. On a larger number, I'm getting the number 864. That's because 10 will go into 8,642, 864 full times. So I'm getting the number 864. But if you look at how this lines up, after the integer division is done, well, the ones place of 864 is the same as the tens place on 8,642. And I know how to get the ones place of a number. I use modular division and just take the number mod 10. So if I go back up to my formula for the tens place, I'm just going to do 10 integer division or a num integer division by 10 mod 10. When I do that, sure enough, I'm getting the number 4 and just the number 4. So my tens place formula is now working correctly. If I want to get the hundreds, I can take num integer division 100. Let's go ahead and add that to our printout and see what happens. When I take the number and integer division by 100, I'm getting the number 86. Well, look at what happened again. The ones place of my integer division is the hundreds place of my four-digit number. And the way I get my ones place is to take the number mod 10. You can see now my 6 is correctly put in the hundreds variable. So all I'm doing is deconstructing this number with a series of formulas. Let's take a look at the thousands place, and you guessed it, num integer division by a thousand will get me my thousands place. And I, I don't even need to do the mod command for that. Let's go ahead and add that to our print statement here at the bottom to check it. You see I'm getting the number 8642. So I'm... 
the formula for the middle numbers, in this case the tens and the hundreds, get a little bit more nuanced, but it's still completely possible using only integer division in the mod command to break apart a number. Of course, just like I did last time, I can take the number and I can print it in reverse and thousands. And so I can take the number 8,642, break it down and print it as 2468. It gives me the ability to manipulate a number in a way that I wouldn't be able to do if I was looking at it purely as a number. And then, of course, if I wanted to print these out as um, without the spaces, I could go through, just like I did last time, and turn each one of these into a string using the string function. But one other trick, if you remember back to the advanced string formatting lesson that we can do this, is I can print the string percent %s four times, and then tell Python I want to print the ones tens, hundreds, and thousands. And that has the same effect as converting these all to strings because percent %s in Python is interpreted as a string command. So it's a quicker way, especially when you're doing larger numbers, to print it out in a way that looks like the original number. So you're probably saying to yourself, Steve, this is really simple. This is something that's pretty easy. I can do this. And I agree. It should be something that's fairly painless to do. But go ahead and test yourself by challenging yourself to this challenge program. Now, this is a, a little game that I have my students write in class a lot of the times, and it's called Guess the Place. When I run this program, I, it simply says, welcome to the Guess the Place game, and then it prints out a number. In this case, it's a five-digit number, and the number is 84,345. And it says, what number appears in the hundreds place? Well, of course, that's the three. I select three, and it says, you are correct. Congratulations. If I ran this program again, what number appears in the hundreds place? Again, I'm going to go ahead and be incorrect, and I'm going to guess that it's a nine. It prints that I am incorrect, and it prints the correct answer. The correct answer was 8. Now that I run the program again, it says what number appears in the 1's place. That's a 6. Run it again. What appears in the 100's place? Let's say it's a 5. Incorrect, the number was a 4. What number appears in the 100's place? Man, I'm getting a lot of 100's here. But the idea of the program, there we go, a 10,000's place. The idea of the program is this. Your program should randomly generate a number between 10,000 and 99,999. Basically, every five-digit number, excluding those that would start with a zero. The program needs to break down each one of those places. It's then going to select a random place. It's going to select either the 10,000s, 1,000s, 100s, 10s, or 1s, and then challenge the player to guess the number that's in that place. So there's two randomizations going on in this program. The number itself is random, and the space that it's going to ask the user to select is also random for each running. Now you can tell in my program here, I didn't put it into any kind of continuous loop. I just had the program run through once, and you can certainly do that um, if you want to get a little bit more practice, certainly put it into a while loop, ask the user if they want to quit, ask the user if they want to continue, have it keep score, I mean, do all these things that will get you into the programming language. But think this one through because it's a very simple program with the same simple concept that was brought up here in this lesson, but it will make sure that you have a good grasp on what's going on. As always, if you have any questions about writing this program, if something's not working for you or you're not understanding it, feel free to go ahead and leave your questions in the comments and I will get to them and help you out any way that I can. The ultimate goal is to make you a better programmer. So thank you so much for watching lesson 16 on modular arithmetic and have a great day.